Well, good morning, everyone. How's it going? Sean here with an early morning Genetry Solar video. In this video, I'm going to give you an update on my system here. Uh, I've been extremely, extremely busy. I've been trying to pack it all in, and we have the holiday coming up, and you know what? I'm going to abandon ship for the weekend, and uh, not just the weekend, but starting Friday. I'm pretty much going to be out of the office until... Tuesday morning because I need to get away. I absolutely do. I'm going to end up going bald before I'm 40 if I don't uh, go and relax somewhere and stop worrying so much about work. Anyways, 833 Genetry, toll free Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Um, I have started writing down the number of calls that I actually take and the length of time. And um, yeah, between 9 and 5. Uh, about 90% of my time is on the phone, so it's interesting how that whole thing seems to work out. Text messaging, emails, and so on, all in there included. But, um, genetrysolar.com, pick up a Wi-Fi board, and uh, this is what it looks like. You will love it. It's wonderful. It's powerful. It's magic. So... I have my system partially online, and if you look over in this corner here, you'll probably see some octopus spider thing going on over here. The reason is because the bus bars did not quite work out as we had planned, and I consider the first run as being a trial run. No fault of Sean Buckner, but... Um, the, uh, the, the bus bars just did not work out like I was hoping that they would. Again, trial run, he's making me a new set. Uh, unfortunately he ran out of material, so it's going to be a little while before I get some, and I wasn't going to leave the system offline while I wait another week or two for these bus bars. So I decided to rig something up. There's no way that that is in any way, um compliant with any national electric codes or anything else like that i don't like it zoomed in here <clears throat> so i've got essentially a two gauge wire running from the uh battery post there to my fuse which is running up to a pair of one gauge wires that's running to the inverter same exact thing for the negative side i know it's not ideal and i wrapped it up with a whole bunch of electrical tape so that it wouldn't come into contact with anything but this is just so that i can get online to flex the system to test the batteries to make sure everything's okay i'm not going to sit here for another two weeks without this system just because i'm waiting on a couple of bus bars i'm not drawing the inverter down very hard so i'm not worried about those uh battery cables heating up or anything else like that um, this is just so that I can get the basics online, see how the inverter is running with the new batteries, be able to charge and discharge the batteries, and um, it's been working out good so far. This is day number one. So I went through a full, basically 24 hours with the system online, and uh, it's been nice. <clears throat> so I was able to get through the night. There were some things around the house I forgot to turn off. Um, I was so focused on this that I didn't even go around the house and turn things off. I wasn't even really paying attention. Um, so I ended up consuming 4.1 kilowatts overnight alone. Now add to that the inverter itself, which is horribly inefficient right now, which I will be fixing at a later date. I'll get a video of that as well. And, uh, yeah, I was, uh, definitely near the six kilowatt mark for the night, just the night. That's when, uh, the charge controllers were in what they call night mode. So as soon as that went into night mode, I consumed almost six kilowatts. It was roughly about six kilowatts, we'll say, of energy overnight. And with a 20 kilowatt hour pack, technically I only used about... Oh, well, 28, 29% of the total capacity of the pack. However, I am cutting that in half for me. So really, I used over 50% of what I wanted to actually use. 
Remember, these batteries are capable of far more than where I'm setting the limit, simply because I want these to last for years and years. Now, it still leaps and bounds above what I had before, but that's no reason for me to say, okay, well, now I can use 20 kilowatts every night. That's not the point. So I'm still going to be, wherever possible, using our most consuming items during the day and then at night just kind of coast and that's the whole point so this is the first night i have some tweaking to do i have some things i have to do uh to lower my nighttime usage you know i was on the computer for the first time uh in a while actually playing a game and um you know i just um you know i i basically um just kind of let the house run just to see what it would do just to see what was going on and uh when i went to bed that is uh at night i was at just slightly under uh 56 volts it was about 50 i don't know i think it was about 55.8 or something like that and i woke up to about 52.9 volts it's falling further because i got up at oh, shoot six o'clock so the sun wasn't even up and i had my shop lights on and i opened the fridge a couple times and i used the microwave so yeah it fell it fell more but the point is is that overnight while i was sleeping while well, technically everybody should be sleeping um i went from about we'll just say a tad under 56 to uh we dropped about three volts uh on the pack so i don't consider that to be bad at all i really don't um and again that was with me just kind of willy-nilly and i did not go to extremes to say okay i'm going to eke every watt out of this and really my biggest consumer of these batteries is this inverter itself so i have some fixing i need to do um first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to drop the buck converter these battery or these better these fans are rated to 56 volts very seldom will the batteries be above 56 volts. They go into float mode at 57. So, you know, with a draw on the system, I'm not anticipating any problems. Yes, it's one volt technically over where the limits are of the fans. Um, but, you know, if I do notice uh, that I'm running into a problem, uh sid is working on some other fans that'll handle i think up to 70 volts something like that so if i do notice a problem where the fans are you know disintegrating then that's something that i will address but one volt over max i don't think is going to be a cause for alarm especially considering that max is only going to happen during the day only on full sun and only when the batteries are basically at float um <clears throat> so i'm not anticipating it's going to be all day all night anything like that so dropping the buck converter will save me almost a half an amp per hour um there's also uh said you know he's got some ideas for for example like you've got all of these caps that are on the uh output board and i can eliminate all but one which will dramatically uh lower my standby cost but there's also there's a choke i remember reading on one of the renewable energy sites long ago somebody had wrapped a choke a special tall square choke they wrapped their transformer i believe positive around it Maybe they had two chokes, positive and negative. I can't remember. If you guys know, let me know. Or send me that link or something else like that. Because these little donut chokes that are in here, they're good. But we haven't been able... They're not very big. So I need to add another couple of turns on these chokes. But the problem is, is I literally have... Uh, what? eight wires that come from the transformer wrapped trying to wrap through that little donut choke and if i could make just one more turn i could reduce the uh the standby loss uh even further uh i would say probably you know two three hundred milliamps per hour and that's a big deal when you're off the grid 
um <clears throat> you know i'm so used to just basically running on the sun and that's it and then when it gets dark i shut down well now i need to literally extract every single watt that i can possibly extract out of the system and if it can be extracted then i will so if you guys are uh, know where i can find that choke again it's it's tall and um it you you wrap it around like this it's not round it's not like a donut it's a tall kind of rectangular choke and I'd like to grab a pair of those so that I can wrap the transformer uh, around that um, so if you guys know where that's at just send me a link or or whatever I would really appreciate it so the goal is to basically make the inverter as in, as efficient as it can possibly be powerjack has added lots of different stuff to the inverter to try to fix issues clean up noise in the transformer etc etc and um you know this particular transformer does not produce any noise so i can drop down to just one cap that'll save me quite a bit adding that big choke on the transformer will save me quite a bit doing things like dropping the lcd backlight will save me getting rid of all of these green leds i mean if the inverter fails to start then it's likely that, you know, I've never once come across a, a situation where I've said, oh, that one light is out, that must be the problem. Never once. It's never been like, oh, the power source board light isn't on, so I guess, well, the power source board is bad, because if the power source board is bad, none of these lights are coming on. And so it's just one of those things where if something were to fail on here, I would likely just replace the whole control board. I wouldn't even bother replacing that single part because i've got parts up the wazoo so i am in a unique position to be able to do that i know not all of you are so as far as i'm concerned all these little green leds that are here it's not like i look into my inverter every single day and say wow that's beautiful i can get rid of all those green leds to save some power it's not going to be much but again it's one of those things that adds up it's like running a light bulb at night so there are things that I can do to help. Now you can see probably my little BMS contraption that I've got going on right here. It looks like the cells are finally starting to come down and be more balanced. You can see it's down to 47 millivolts. I've seen it as low as 42. So they do seem to be doing something. But, man, it's taking a long time. So yes, this this I'm going to be mounting on the side of the batteries. Right now it's just kind of hanging here with some electrical tape. I am going to be mounting this on the side of the battery to make it more professional and safer, obviously. And of course, all of that is going away once I get the bus bar. But I did want to bring the system online. I wanted to get the house running. I wanted to make sure that everything was working fine. And I wasn't willing to wait another couple of weeks for that to happen. I still am only running one array right now. So I've only got my eastern array that's running. Um, I'll bring my Western Array online this weekend, I'm hoping, um, and so I'll be able to uh, almost double my output. Again, this is all just kind of baby steps to get everything going, to get everything online. I still have that easy-to-read battery meter here so that, um, you know, Danielle in particular, she can look at this and see what our usage actually is or what the status of the batteries actually are. So there's things like that. Um, and I do like the idea of being able to glance over and seeing the batteries. So, yeah, anyway, there you have it. Um, I'm just kind of uh, just kind of going at it a little by you know a little bit at a time. you know i've I've got so much stuff going on right now, trying to get inverters built and trying to get inverters repaired and trying to work on my own house projects. It's been tough. It really has, but I am. I'm working on it. I'm getting the best that I can out of it, and you know uh that's that's how it is so <clears throat> uh if you have any questions, of course, let me know again, please keep in mind I will be gone from Friday through Monday. I am going to be closed for the weekend. I need to decompress. We're gonna be going uh boating um over the weekend we're going to be looking at some properties we are i am going to turn off my business so that i can decompress because i absolutely need it right now 
So I will be back on Tuesday morning ready to answer your phone calls. So if you're watching this and you've got an emergency, get it to me before 5 o'clock today, Thursday, because I will not be available after that till Tuesday. Thanks again for all your support. Hopefully you have a great Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to plan on being away, so I'm going to have a great Memorial Day weekend. Be nice to decompress. 833 Genetry, toll free Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Thanks again, and take care.